guys, welcome to Mana Podcast. And today we have uh, Venu, Hemant, and Jairam from Log. Welcome Hello. to the podcast. Um, just before we start, um, I just want to talk about what exactly Log is. So Log is a, a digital platform through which uh, transporters and trackers they could connect with each other. Okay. Uh, and um, they could actually uh, come to a platform, and they could uh, transporters could discover that track. Okay. Um, see to it that um, you know their the logistic um, uh, network mm-hmm. is being utilized by the trucks that are provided would you, by would you say this is uh, uh, basically an uber or an ola for truckers and truckers basically okay so uh, in a way yes mm-hmm. okay so what does it do uh, like uh, using the smartphone mm-hmm. um, a trucker could look at the available uh, loads in the vicinity or in the location that he is interested in. Mm-hmm. So therefore, uh, through a tap of a button, he could actually see that, let's assume there is a trucker in uh, uh, Srinagar in Kashmir, okay. or a trucker in, in uh, South of India. Mm-hmm. He could find out that uh, for a 32 feet multi axle, here are the various options that he has. Similarly, um, the guys who have uh, loads which are transporters, Mm-hmm. Uh, the large and small and medium as well. Mm-hmm. They would actually uh, come to the platform and uh, click on a button. They would discover the trucks. Okay. So, if, for example, if I want to transport something, right, from place A to place B, right? Yeah. So I go, I go and log and I check. Uh, so, who are the who are the truckers that are available in my location A, right? And then, so, you, so uh, we, we are not open for end consumers. We okay. work. Uh, okay. It's not a B2B. Okay. Yeah, it's a B2B. Mm-hmm. So the logistics companies who partner with end the consumers, mm-hmm. they are the ones who look out for the market trucks, mm-hmm. and that is the precise problem that we are addressing. So ninety-five percent of the time, in ninety-five uh, uh, percent of the time, mm-hmm. these logistics companies look for market trucks, mm-hmm. and they find it very difficult to. Uh, get them on time uh, through a uh, you know, well-defined process. Mm-hmm. So that's how we are trying to crack. All right. So you would say um, this is only B2B, right? So is everything pre-planned or is anything available if I need it in like an, an emergency? Like what if I have to transport something tomorrow? Like my business has transport. Does it have to be pre-planned or is it if you, if you can actually get in touch with the truckers immediately and get it done? Yeah, so uh, how does it work today? That most of the things are just in time, right? So you, uh, most of the manufacturers, they plan like, you know, one day in advance or the same day, right? Okay. So it's never like a month month of oh, okay. advance planning okay. thing. So most of the things are just in time. Mm-hmm. And uh, the end consumers who are large manufacturers, mm-hmm. they place their requirements on daily basis or one day ahead in advance mm-hmm. to the logistics companies. Mm-hmm. And the logistics companies in turn uh, look out for uh, the trucks in the vicinity that would be going from point A to point B. Okay. And based upon a lot of uh, you know algorithms that we run in the backdrop, mm-hmm. we kind of uh, find out that which trucker would be willing to go to say, for example, there is a request for Guwahati. You know, mm-hmm. just that there is a truck standing wouldn't mean that he would go to Guwahati. So there would be people who have some preferred uh, locations or destination that they would like to travel. Or the preferred material that they would want to carry. So accordingly, so, they assign a trucker, is it? Yeah, right. So oh, okay. we would capture those information and then we ensure that only those pinpointed truckers are being uh, uh, alerted and therefore uh, they are interested, they could go there. Okay, all right. So, Venu uh, and Jairam, like this is a question for both of you also. How did you all meet? Like, how did you all start? Like, how did LOB happen? So, because I heard you guys were at different companies, one was in Dell and one was in Fidelity, if I'm not wrong, and you, know, you guys yeah. met, and how like, how did this happen? Uh, yes, Nikita, actually I was in US and uh, working in IT industry and relocated to India in 2011. Oh, nice. And I was looking for an opportunity to do something. Mm-hmm. At that time, like, my, my uncle asked me to join, uh, join a brick and mortar uh, transportation startup company okay. in just two years' time. We achieve 50 crores turnover with mm-hmm. 25 branches across Pan India. There are a lot of challenges in the transportation industry. Like everything is manual, totally unorganized, a lot of redundancy. And stakeholders are not educated. Mm-hmm. I used to feel bad how organized this industry is. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. But other way, I see big opportunity to change and transform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, whatever I learned is asset for me mm -hmm. to tap huge opportunity. We have to understand the logistic industry and I used to interact with, with him and uh, like you know told all the uh, challenges we have in logistic industry that's where this idea of love was born so you and venu were friends before before you started yes. the company you guys were friends and it was just a discussion that turned into a business yes yes we we no understand the logistic domain because initially like he developed software for large transportation companies mm -hmm. and i i i you interact i used to interact with him in a transportation language like what are the problems and challenges Oh, okay, awesome. And how did Hemant come into the picture? How did the CTO happen? Um, I guess that was about a year and a half ago. Okay. Uh, we kind of bumped into each other at a pub. Oh, really? <laughs> all the places, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. so it was sort of an entrepreneur network, get, up, mm -hmm. get together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met each other, we were talking random things. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually they convinced me to join them. Okay, all right. So you've been you've been uh, part of Lob since the starting, right? Since uh, one and a half. Yeah. One and a half years. Okay, perfect. All right. And um, so, what what where do you see you where do you see Lob in a couple of years? Like, so you've you've taken the whole truck industry now. Do you have plans of moving into other transport means, like you know, like other automobiles? Like, do you want to expand in that way, or do you just want to ex to scale? Uh, Location wise, like get out of India. What is the future plan? Um, yeah, for the next uh, two years at least, mm -hmm. for us, it's about capturing the market we are in mm -hmm. uh, the current and building market. our moat. Yeah. And building the? Uh, building our moat, our monopoly. Okay, okay. Uh, because uh, we have a huge data play. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us, it's all about uh, how. Do we leverage it and bring out bring it out in our product strategy? Okay. Because people love our products, people are using our products. But for now, uh, the challenge is how do we scale over across India, and that's the plan we are on right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the next two years. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's all about uh, uh, the next products that we have, which are global. Okay. So uh, what, next two years. What are, what are the global India, products? Uh... That you guys are planning to have. Yeah, uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, products which we feel uh, is a common problem across the globe uh, in logistics, mm -hmm. and uh, we're waiting for them to mature. Actually, we're waiting for them to mature. No. In you, India, you don't want to disclose it for now. <laughs> Sorry. I said you don't want to disclose the exact uh, idea for now. Yes, no. Of course not. We have very well-funded competitors. Of course not. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. sense. And I was uh, talking to Venu the other day, and he mentioned that uh, you know the biggest one of the biggest challenges that he is uh, facing is that is to get to truckers because they're not tech savvy, right? It's not easy for them to use apps, or it's not uh, you know it's it's very hard for them to get used to the whole fact of you know just downloading an app and using it, right? So and he said you guys have been addressing it by making the UI very simple and just you know keeping it very minimal. So how like how do you how do you go and do you have to sort of manually have to teach them or how does this work like how do you get the truckers on board? So the first thing is the product strategy. I think that's something that we got um, right very initially. Mm -hmm. uh, it was all about the user. We understood that these users are not you know uh, tech savvy. They haven't used an email before. They haven't. Most of them haven't even touched WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. So. For us, the whole goal was uh, they are using smartphones, and there's this whole digital revolution because of geo and all that happened. So all of them have a smartphone for sure, but nobody uses it, right? So yes, they are not used to it. So our uh, goal was can we make things happen with just click of a button? So uh, we have another app coming up uh, shortly. I think in uh, in about two three weeks we should have it live. Mm -hmm. uh, so even that app. We are. Our goal is to figure out how do we make things happen at the click of a button. If you are not used to a smartphone, mm -hmm. and there are uh, in the same place, we have found that there are people who are very tech savvy. They you just tell them download this app and they'll do everything in front of you. You don't even have to give them instructions. Oh. So with people like that, we don't want them to feel 
that the app is dumb. So right. handling so both. It, it, it has to be a balance of both. Uh, yeah, uh, I wouldn't say balance. We we wanted to do justice to exactly the user, not imagining him in our head, mm -hmm. because uh, Venu himself uh, spent like uh, a whole week traveling with a trucker, okay. living with him, staying where he stays, mm -hmm. going on the truck and traveling across to just to understand who they are. Okay. So uh, that has been our product strategy from the beginning. Oh, to understand them well. Do you think it will make sense to uh, have the apps in different languages as well? To... Uh, we do have our apps in different languages. Oh, right do? now it's available in uh, five language. different languages. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's already localized. Okay, perfect. All right. I was just talking to uh, Venu the other day, right? So he was telling me that his first employee was a CMO. So what, uh, Venu, do you mind explaining the story behind how you got him on board? Yeah, so uh, initially, um, you know, when we started off, uh, the assumption that we had was uh, the product that we have is right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should start doing the marketing from there onwards. Mm -hmm. um, rather looking at, you know, uh, having the product hydrate multiple times by having the customer giving you the, um, you know, his views and the feedback. Right? Mm -hmm. So we didn't wait for that. So we didn't uh, wait for the product to get mature and then go to the market, right? Mm -hmm. So we, you know, were too aggressive in the beginning by pushing the product that wasn't, uh, Not you know, had not gone through the entire process of uh, getting the maturity. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what we had seen that, uh, you know, employees uh, whom we had onboarded in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, were pushed too hard uh, to, uh, to the market when we weren't ready. Right? So then we had to change our strategy to make, like him was telling a while back, that get the product strategy right before getting to the market by saying, yeah, we are there. Right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, we uh, spent about a year after that, you know, correcting our path in terms of making the uh, product right mm -hmm. uh, by making it as simple as possible. Uh, rather look at like, you know, we have feature A, feature B, feature C kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, more than that, you know, simplicity, and uh, most of the things should be done in a single click rather going through rather multiple going through process. Right. right. So that's how our focus has changed since then. And we see that uh, that uh, has led to a very good uh, customer base and also very good repeat customer. Our repeat customer base is about 80%. Yeah. So what right. do so you say your main channel of acquisition is? Uh, most of the things today is digital. Okay, so we run a lot of uh, Facebook campaign, a lot of WhatsApp campaign, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we see a shift from 2015-16 where we were more on the ground, mm -hmm. but today we see that uh, conversion rates have dramatically picked up via Facebook and WhatsApp campaigns. Oh, perfect! You guys yeah. are planning to go B two C, correct? Like once I think. No, no, no not no. immediately. Nothing. After not immediately. immediately. After uh, two years. Yeah. Okay, that's. We want to see how the market matures and then. Doing one thing itself is a huge right. challenge when you start up. Mm. Yeah. Fine. All right. Venu, what is your favorite business book? Sorry, business? Business, business book. book. Business book, uh, zero to one. Zero to one. All right. Um, Yours, uh, your, uh, Hemant, your question, what would you do if you woke up as Venu one day randomly? I would buy an iPhone. <laughs> oh, he doesn't, he doesn't use an iPhone, is it? He doesn't like it. He uses Android and it's frustrating to communicate with him. <laughs> I'm because an Android person. So. Android phones and we have to use the Android phone. <laughs> All right. Um, Jairam, your question would be, what would you do if you woke up as Hemant. Yeah, I have to read a lot of technology books actually. Easy, <laughs> easy that uh, modern and advanced technologies. So you woke, what would you do if you woke up with so much technology? Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if you woke up with so much knowledge one day, like randomly? Oh, instead of reading properly, I'll ask Hemant sometimes. <laughs> reading and understanding is a big challenge actually. I don't have okay. time to do that. Making uh, we know yours. Um, what do you dislike about Hemant? Uh, staying too late uh, in the in the night at office. He only goes back to home at like three a.m. or four a.m. 
and it's not like one of days it's like every day isn't that a good thing is working so yeah, hard not a good, <laughs> <laughs> good health wise <laughs> all right hemant uh, who is a better boss venu or jaira i don't know <laughs> I, i think you got the boss wrong here <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to answer this. You can't get away with this. <laughs> uh, okay, no, it's fine. No, I think uh, it's our bank balance. <laughs> All yeah. right, uh, Jairam, uh, which is your favorite movie? Bahubali was good. That's that's a nice movie. All right. Uh, last question for Venu. <clears throat> If you had to dedicate a song to Jairam, which song would that be? <laughs> Rupana nahi. Or then if you had to dedicate a song to Venu what would that be? I don't know. Uh I think Rocket Man. I'm sure he's never heard it but yeah. Okay, last question for Jairam. Jairam if you had to change one thing about Venu or Hemant what would that be? He's, he's he's blank. He's like I don't know. He's blank. No, yeah. he tells us eat healthier <laughs> because we are eating, always eat, eating out. Eat and eat and sleep healthy. Yeah, yeah. We probably that is. He's an early sleep. riser and uh, early. Uh, See, I go to bed around nine thirty and get up at five every day. And when he goes to bed around one one thirty and get up. And he must go at five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So the second second section of this round, right? So I'm going to give you a short form. If any of you know what it is, you just put your hand up. Like W F H. W F H. Yeah. So we know that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys worked in Dell. I'm sure you know what W F H is. No. Work from home. Work from home. Okay. Got it. BBMP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. KSRTC. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it's a very uh, unique name so i and your company is registered with truck central right so did you sort of shift the name from truck central to rob or was it lob all all the way so uh, when we started off uh, in the beginning so we definitely knew that um, when people are uh, looking at legal names right, so they would like to see uh, where it is and then so you wanted to showcase something related to our city sort of truck and other things that's how we made the truck central thing to start off with but then um, we realized that um, if we have to uh, make uh, people use the name more like a verb right? how uh, use certain things in the market today like you know did you uh, lock today if you say right? so we uh, wanted to keep a name that is very short mm -hmm. uh, well uh, could be simply used by the people folks in north indian south indian east west kind of thing the people who are educated who are not so much right? mm -hmm. so we wanted a word that is very simple to use um, and uh, could go well with different accents mm -hmm. and uh, you know people could pronounce in different languages also very comfortably mm -hmm. and when it is written also it is easier and mm -hmm. over a period if the people are using it it should be turning out basically to increase the convenience of the usage right like correct. okay so before we end this right there are two uh, questions that we usually address okay so one is uh, what do you have to say about the startup culture in india like what do you think is it is it doing well or you think a lot of support is required uh, or you, what what is your what is your take on the startup culture in india currently i think any of any one of you can answer this well right now it seems to be uh, amazing actually i mean we need so many companies doing some amazing solution true um compared to i can only tell you from my experience mm -hmm. uh, my first startup i did it while i was in engineering mm -hmm. and uh, compared to then to now uh, i think there's much more hope in the air uh, much more positivity around starting up doing your own thing yeah risk taking ability has gone up yeah risk appetite has gone up there yeah. and yeah. the perception now uh, at least when i was doing my first company if you are starting up people are like okay you must be an idiot mm -hmm. because you never got a job elsewhere yeah that is the assumption so whereas now when you were there so you there think it's like, more appreciated and accepted than what it was before that yeah. sort of gives more encouragement okay Yeah, and the ecosystem is much more evolved. Right. And Jairam, do you have to add anything? Yeah. Now, like, uh, funds are available, and uh, American and Chinese companies are looking into India to invest in startup companies, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So that's that's also a, an advantage. All right. Yeah. The and more the resources, the better output you're going to get anyway. Makes sense. That's true. That's true. And more the money, more the resources. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Money is the resource. Everything else is available. <laughs> All right. Uh, one more thing is, um, see, there. Even though you know how the startup culture is, you know, sort of increasing day by day, uh, but there are a lot of startups that fail also at the same time. Correct. It's it's also a good thing, right? Like failures are a good thing. But is there? Do you want to address a couple of problems like that you've gone through and you've already found solutions to it and tell tell the people who are just starting off that these are the things that you should avoid so that you know they don't go through the same mistakes again so are there any sort of problems or any sort of advice that you want to give the people people who are just starting off now point 1 is uh, don't take any advice point 2 is keep your common sense together and uh, you got to be very aware that you are uh, trying to start up which means it's an experiment experiments can succeed or fail so you need to have very short feedback loops mm -hmm. which tell you when you're failing and course correct as soon as possible so fail fast doesn't mean go put 100 million in the market and rotate it and uh, not show output that's not fail fast mm -hmm. uh, fail fast is learn from the market and show small economies of scale which work so uh, that's that's all i would like to add perfect him uh, venu and jairam do you have anything else to add small advice yeah, yeah. to what you want to give out the people who are just starting up okay yeah, so we should uh, try in some of the micro markets um, you know ensure that the customer uh, is the one mm -hmm. who is using a product 
because you have ensured that he understands the value of usage. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you have hit that particular uh, curve, then you are very sure that he's going to come back and use it. And then that's when you can actually repeat the whole cycle in other geographies. So too much of a rush uh, in getting your product in multiple geographies together may not be the right thing. Mm -hmm. But the right thing would be that you know succeed at one place and replicate at other. Perfect. And we, we have seen the successful companies doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know at times um, in the rush of getting the traction, we be you know generally miss that out. So micro. Uh, you know, uh, geography is very, very important where you ensure that um, the product runs yeah, and then the All right. And Jairam, do you have anything last one piece of advice? Before yeah, yeah. identify the problem and see the scale. Invest small amount of the money and take the product to the customers. Mm -hmm. If customers are fine, then you scale up. Oh, perfect. All right. One last conclusion statement. So that's our uh, tagline. Did you love today? Okay, all right. Thank you, Vedu. Thank you, Neeman. Thank you, Jairam. It was great talking to you guys, and I wish you all the best. Uh -huh.